this time, we'll call to order the regular city council meeting for August 12, 2019. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lisa, uh, let the attendance show that uh, Chief Sovic and Councilmember Walton are absent this evening. And we'll move on to approval of City Council minutes July. I'm sorry? Would you make a motion to excuse? Oh, you call it. Um, can I make? Can I call? But you say it. Okay. I, I would entertain a motion to excuse Councilmember Walton. I move to excuse Councilwoman Rose Walton. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <coughs> now we'll move on to the approval of the City Council minutes from July 22nd, 2019. I move the minutes. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Approval of the bills. I'll move the bills. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> Uh, we will move on to the approval of tonight's agenda. I'll move the agenda. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> um, do we approve the agenda and then the consent agenda? Okay. Next. Uh, we'll move on to the consent agenda this evening. Move the consent agenda. I'll support. Any question? Discussion? Yep. Councilmember Richards, go ahead. One little question about consent agenda item number one. Uh, I'm fully in favor of. Point of uh, order, Mr. Mayor. Yes, Councilmember Kurtzwell, go ahead. A uh, consent agenda item does not um, have debate or right. commentary. Yeah. So if included, so if you want to have a discussion, you'll need to remove it from the consent agenda or save your comments for your council comments section. Correct. You can just, you can ask the question in the council comments. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Kurtzwell. Thank you, Councilmember Richards. Uh, so we have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> At this time, we will open the floor for public comment. Please state your name and address, and please remember that we do have a two-minute time limit. Good evening, Council and uh, citizens. Uh, Ryan Lair, 716 Grand Court. Uh, I wanted to inform the public, as I announced at the last meeting, that I'm running for mayor and uh, the, uh, on August 19th, I'm going to have a uh, uh, meet and greet at the uh, Java House. And then on September 17th, I will also have a meeting, a meet and greet at the Third Monk Brewery uh, next to the Marathon Gas Station. I hope that everybody can attend and uh, possibly meet our new mayor. And, uh, and I can answer any questions. Uh, I also did an interview with the Oakland Times. And so uh, that's also on my mayoral page. So if you join the Facebook page, you can view that there. And um, I would also like to uh, inform council and the residents that uh, uh, that I'm very sorry to hear about what happened at the cemetery this last week. And uh, I hope that uh, everybody's uh, family's graves that were demolished and destroyed for absolutely no reason at all, I hope that they're... Uh, they got repaired and the families are happy with those results. 
So um, again, I'm sorry that they were um, demolished and destroyed. Um, that's people's homes. And their final resting place and should be treated with respect. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Judy Keeling, Colonial Acres, 62180, uh, Arlington Circle. I know that from being at the meetings that you have a company that's assessing our taxes, and he mentioned Colonial Acres, and the summer taxes came out, and they're really, really high. It's, it's very, very hard for the, a lot of the seniors. Um, they're being charged as much as some people in, uh, with houses. We don't own our property at all. We only own our, our condominium. So I w I'm asking the council, please, to look into this tax as assessment and see if you can help our residents. Thank you. Thank you. All right, at this time we will close public comment. We will move on to the discussion of downtown. Mr. Donahue. Hello. I'll make it brief. Uh, just a couple items in addition to those on the report that Paul distributes. The um, 135 East Lake was approved by the Planning Commission last Thursday night. Mm. Um, unanimous approval of those uh, members present. So we want to thank them for that. So the project's moving forward. Uh, again, I think the planned completion date is next summer. And uh, I know the discussions with the Italian restaurant have gone quite well. So don't have exact details. But uh, the owner hopes to come in for a demolition of the interior permit uh, this week. So we'll keep that moving. Uh, the only other item I wanted to bring up is that uh, according to the new DDA law, Public Act 57 of 2018. There have to be two uh, public meetings to discuss DDA plans, progress, and the DDA budget. The format is a presentation with open discussion, Q&A. So according to that requirement, the DDA at its meeting last week chose October 10th, 8 a.m. at a regular board meeting. And we're going to have a special meeting on Monday, November 4th. And we're trying to confirm the uh, South Lion Theater for location for that. That'd be 7 p.m. November 4th. What was the date of that first one? October 10th. Thank you. 8 a.m. and then November 4th, 7 p.m. And the reason for the different times, of course, to accommodate everyone's schedule. That's all I have. Does anyone have anything for Bob tonight? Yes. Councilman Richards, go ahead. Bob. Uh, have you got anything concrete on the, the Veterans Rock, Memorial Rock situation? And we would like to know, okay, the Historical Society, how much of the park, of, the, of the, our section, the parking lot's going to take up? We don't know that. We'd like to see some of the drawings of, of the final site plan, if you've got, if you're that far on it. The final site plan was approved by the Historical Society, and nothing's changed. Oh, the parking lot it? is not part of the plan. The parking lot is not a, part a of the A parking lot was never part of the Veterans Memorial Plan. The recreation plan for the city shows a parking lot there, but that's not part of the Veterans Memorial. Okay. All right. Then there's a mistaken identity then. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. Councilman Rickards, we'll go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I had a couple things. I, I just want to make sure that you know that our state representative, Jim Runstead, is uh, reviewing a plan regarding tax credit for buildings over 50 years old. Um, I, he was going to send me a copy, and I'm sure it's buried somewhere, and I haven't read it yet, but as soon as I get it, I'd like to give it to you. Um, as you know, Jim Runstead is, is very, very interested in historical yes. um, preservation, and I know you are. So I wanted to make sure that you were aware that this is sitting on people's desks up in Lansing. Do you know anything about it? Or? Yes, the Michigan uh, Historic Preservation Network mm -hmm. uh, proposed that. Uh, the statewide association that I sit on 
which Paul previously sat on that board. Uh, we support that effort to bring back the Michigan Historic Preservation Tax Credit, which can be packaged with the federal tax credit. So, and Jim Runstad, big supporter, and we've talked to him, and we love the fact that he supports it. Okay, so I just want to make sure that's out there and, uh, and that you were aware of it. Additionally, I, I, when I was at the um, Motor Fest over the week, uh, two weeks ago, um, a lot of people were commenting on this butterfly that was painted on Corner Cafe. It's absolutely outstanding. Who, who, who's the artist for that? I mean, well, how, a little bit of history. There's been a butterfly there for years, and it fades and it's brought back. So I think the butterfly goes back several years. So it's been kind of ghosted and then repainted. I think the last person to paint the butterfly was Dana Johnson. Oh, Dana Johnson. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. oh, oh, she's here tonight. <laughs> so I while mean, it's technically a mural, I think because it's been there for years, uh, and there's great discussion going on with the Cultural Arts Commission, and uh, we've had discussions in the city to uh, talk more openly with the Planning Commission to kind of clarify uh, the placement of murals. So we hope to get that done soon. I, I just want to let you know, it's, it's very lively. It was large. People were staying in front of it, taking pictures. I just want to let you know, it was just a great piece of wall art. And um, I just thought I would ask. Uh, it, is, it is great. We love that kind of thing. That's super. Um, also, a business owner contacted me about platform dining and wanted to know where that is, what your position is. Are you going forward? Have you decided maybe no? Well, my position is kind of irrelevant, but <laughs> uh, there was great discussion when I first came on in 2016. Um, we talked, um, Lloyd Collins and I, previous city chief, police chief, uh, we actually had a conversation with Chuck Keller of the Road Commission, and uh, we felt that because of the um, narrowness and the traffic counts of 10 Mile and uh, Lafayette Street, that uh, we were both in agreement that we were going to not really pursue it. Um, I know they are successful, even in high traffic areas. Uh, Birmingham, yeah. probably an example. Birmingham has them uh, right on Maple with higher traffic counts. Um, it can be a little controversial. People think they're unsafe. But I think the data shows that they work, and they haven't had issues in Birmingham. But... Um, that's kind of where it stands. We did discuss it and didn't pursue it any f further after 2016. Maybe I should have this business owner contact you because I think they would be interested in, in pursuing it. And if you have one, I'm sure you'll have two. Sure. Yeah, I mean, all those ideas, um, we should discuss those, and the DDA board would be glad to have a discussion. be great. Also, when I was at um, Motorfest, there was a lot of talk in, uh, from people that, that appeared to know or have information. I don't know if they did or not. Uh, so I thought I would just go to the source. Is um, that there is going to be a new business moving into um, uh, the draft house, uh, possibly. That, that there's a new business coming in. Nobody seems to know who it is, who's running it. Um, what it's going to look like, what kind of restaurant it's going to be, whether it's going to be just a restaurant, whether it's going to be a bar or whatever. But I do have some, some comments that I wanted to make on that that I clearly heard people talk about. I, I did call the real estate company and ask them a couple weeks ago what the price of that property was. It seemed to be a little bit high for what needs to be done to that property. Um, I also have a feeling that I'm pretty accurate about what the prices were paid for the Artcraft building and for the RCA building. And the draft house is way off the mark. I mean, I'm just, I have a real estate broker's license, so I, I'm not that far off. That price is far off compared to what needs to be done. And I think I recall seeing kitchen equipment being moved out of there. I don't know if that's true. I mean, I saw it coming out. I don't yes, know how much. Removed. Has all of it been removed? I'm not sure if all of it, but I know a substantial so amount of the stainless yeah. fixtures were removed. Oh. So whoever buys that, and if they're going to use it as a restaurant bar, is going to have to make a substantial investment 
just just on getting a kitchen in there. And the price they're asking and the amount of money that is going to have to be spent, I just think somebody's being a little bit unrealistic. That's just my personal opinion. Because if, 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 if somebody's going to come in, and I don't know who it is, and they're just going to slap a coat of paint on that building out there and think that this community is going to forget the mess that that restaurant was and a coat of paint is going to cover it over, they have another thing coming. Because this, I don't think this community is going to put up with it. And South Lyon shouldn't have to. South Lyon should be commanding top restauranteurs moving into this community. The Italian restaurant that's going to be coming in is going to be competition for that business. The hotel is competition for that business. So if they're not coming in willing to spend a lot of money and to upgrade that property, we're looking at another failure potentially on that corner because it's going to take money now to come into this town and build a business that's going to have a sustainable clientele where people are going to want to come and visit them. That's my two cents. So I don't know if, if what people were saying was true or not, but, you know, coat of paint isn't going to do it. Well, I'm, I'm not going to identify the person because until they come into City Hall and ask for permits, um, it is all talk. Okay. Um, I, I know that um, because it's been closed for 12 months, um, that opens up uh, the uh, ability for the city to, to look at the liquor license and to uh, discuss a transfer of a liquor license if that's what happens versus an outright sale. Mm. And so I have told the people that are considering occupying the building mm. that they're going to have to follow the liquor license ordinance. Uh, they're going to have to come in and deal with the building department. Um, so we'll see. I mean, we're, just, we're waiting. We're waiting for someone to take an official move. <clears throat> and I agree totally that I've been also frank so that the public knows. I've been very frank, um, going as far as I possibly can to tell them about the negative perception and how the last business <coughs> operated in its final months and the health department issues. So I've been very frank with those people. Uh, and we'll see. But well, I appreciate your comments. Well, just one more moment. Is, is here's, here's the real issue, is that sitting here on council, now that I have additional information that somebody may be coming before council, I feel responsible, totally responsible, for the businesses that come into this community. And I remember when I was served plastic wear down there because hot water wasn't even, even turned on. So they weren't even washing their dishes or sanitizing anything. And I feel responsible mm -hmm. it, 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 for that kind of product coming to this town. No, it can't come into this town. I agree. Thank you. Councilmember Kivel, did you have something? Uh, actually, I'm... I'm only too happy to embrace some activity at that, that location. I, I think there's a clean slate every time somebody kicks their doors open for the first time. So if it's the same people, if it's other people, whoever, that location has a chance to end up being reinvented. So I'm, I'm going to welcome whatever goes on there until they prove that they can't pull it off. So I think it's kind of counterintuitive for us to end up assailing some business that might end up considering taking a property that hasn't had good success in the past and and forecast for them that they can't make it there. So I think it's it's in our duty to end up trying to create an environment that allows them to be successful. So I'll say something. Councilman Richards, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I went by there today and I was in a hurry. Uh, I didn't stop, but the first thing I noticed was that door was unlocked and it was open, okay? Uh, and there's vinyl over the windows, so it seemed, okay? So that meant somebody was in there and doing something. If it's the previous owner's, uh, he's got a full right to be in there, I suppose. But, uh, you know, he's, uh, so I would hope something happens to the building. We all do, you know? Sure. Uh, sure. I, I, if I may. Um, we are at a point now where all the restaurants want to be in this community. The problem is, as I've said before, we just don't have a place for them. They need 
3,500 to 4,000 plus square feet. And that is really the only facility available at this point in time. And so if we had facilities, we could have three or four more restaurants immediately. Top notch, um, you know, upscale. They all want to be here. It, the days of how would we ever attract one are over. As soon as we have a space that's reasonably priced, which is the key, as, as Maggie said. So if we have a reasonably priced space, they'll be here in a heartbeat. So that's the big if. Yeah. Anyone else with anything for Bob this evening? Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. <clears throat> We'll move on to new business number one this evening, resolution to approve an extension of time limit in paragraph 4A of the conditional rezoning agreement for 825 West Lake Street. Mr. Mayor. Ms. Well, uh, I can at least introduce this matter. Um, so Mr. Langen, on behalf of the old property owner and developers here, this is a bit of a technical issue. Um, the city and LV Holdings had uh, uh, entered into a conditional rezoning agreement which had some time limits. The time limits are allowed by the statute and I would uh, make everybody think back at that time the time limits were really designed to uh, prevent a property from languishing rather than developing. You have before you a, a developer and property owner who are ready to go. The planning commission has looked at the final site plan subject to your approval of this. This is a, this is ready to go. So with that, I will introduce Mr. Bob Langen. And um, if there are any questions, I can also help answer those. Thank, Thank you, you, Councillor. So for the record, Bob Langen, 128 North Center Street, uh, Northville. I'm a principal of LV Holdings. And uh, basically, although tonight is a hopefully a rubber stamp, extending the time period in the, uh, in the conditional rezoning agreement, I thought that it might be prudent for me to bring in some, some examples for you to just see what we're thinking and what we're doing. Um, I will note that tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, I will be in my civil engineer's office writing checks and signing applications for the five or six necessary county and state permits that we need to go ahead with this project. We're in the process of fully funding the project and we're full steam ahead. So um, we also already have, although it wasn't necessary to get for final site plan, we did go forward with uh, engineering and architectural construction drawings. So we are forging ahead full, full boat. And what I have brought for you to look at just for your edification, I think you've seen the color rendering of the uh, exterior facade. I brought the finalized landscape uh, plan and civil drawing, and I brought uh, material samples, if anybody cares to have a look or a touch, or I'll, I'll carry it out to you, whatever. But anyway, just, this is just for your information, as I ask for an extension of our time frame to get the final site plan actually approved. Does anyone have anything for Mr. Langdon? Councilmember Friesen, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Langdon, or Attorney Langdon, can you hand me the one in the middle? That one, yes, that one right there. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks so much. Excuse me. While she Council investigates this, yes. can I ask a question? Uh, okay, you were the one that had made the request for eight months for approval, weren't you? That's correct. Rather than the year that is typical. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm not, not hung up about any delay or anything. So um, I, I was really very pleased to see this move forward as quickly as it did. I thought that the comments that um, planning had were pertinent and, and did end up putting a better project together. So. Um, I, I like the additional stone on there, and you know it does dress the exterior up better. So thank you. Um, I, I'm looking forward to this moving forward. I don't have any resistance. So. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. I got some questions. Did you guys want to see No, nope, I didn't. Thanks. Thanks. Councilmember Thanks. Richards, you have a comment. I have some comments and questions, uh, Mr. Langan. Um, 
Uh, are you the same Robert Langan that was here one year ago that we approved the initial site plan? I am. There's several Robert Langans, as I understand. Well, there's there's uh, there's two that I know of. Yeah. Okay. Are you the father or the son? Or the well, I'm, I'm the father to my son, but my dad is my father, so I'm. I mean, I'm not trying to be cute, but my dad is Bob Langan, and my son is John Robert Langan the third. Okay. Well, uh, I was told there was three, but I'd like to have it clarified. Which? Well, my son goes by Trey, so he's not technically Bob. I thought the the, the tenant in your house over there told me that your son's name was Brian. Is that correct? That's not correct. I don't know what he told you, but I don't know a Brian Langan. I have a brother point named Brian Langan. Mr. Mayor? Councilmember Preezy, what is your point of order? What does this have anything to do with okay. the actual subject matter no. at hand? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll try to get to the point. Mr. Langan, uh, I voted in favor of your proposition the last time, but uh, <clears throat> it will probably be passed tonight, but I plead by voting no against it this time because uh, there's a whole lot of things that you haven't told us that I've found out. I've done a lot of research on this. Uh, we're glad to have apartments and buildings and developers come in, but you own a lot of property. Big, you love corners. I think you probably have me confused with my father, Councilman Richards, and I'd be all too happy to have a private conversation with you and tell is, you my life story. Is he, which, which L. D. Holdings is not the, the individual person. L. D. Holdings is a is a corporation. It's a Each limited of, liability company. L stands for Langan. That's me. V stands for Valvona. That's my brother-in-law, Michael Valvona. He's my partner. You've met him here. Okay. Well, there's. If part of it's all in a holding company, okay, then no one has any real liability, individually. It's all, it's all tied up, okay? I give you credit, you pay for your land up front, okay? With everything you buy. A lot of them don't. But, okay, then you get investors and partners and everything and uh, issue shares or whatever, and then nothing ever gets built. Okay? I can assure you that is absolutely not my plan. I've spent my personal money buying this property I spent my personal money investing in the approvals and paying the consultants to come here before you with, with our best effort to bring a great product to the city of South Lyon. And I can assure you that I have not used other people's money on this. I've used mine, and I'm here before you. I said you use your own money to buy on the land. But was it you or your father that put, when it trains, I've been to Lyon Township, okay, and talked to him. In 2016, when it went to LV Holdings, is that correct? That's correct, sir. Was it you that put the $100,000 into that house through eight and nine, or was it your father? It was my father. I purchased land. I purchased this, LV Holdings purchased this land, which you'll see as part of the conditional rezoning application, um, and it's public knowledge, so I don't mind sharing. My, my brother-in-law and I formed LV Holdings and bought this land for $200,000 cash that we paid to my father for the property. Okay, and that was in 16, July of 16, I believe, okay? All right, in 17, uh, you applied for annexation into the city of South Lyon because you were still in Lyon Township at that time. Correct. And it's according to Mrs. Uh, Marissa Cash, Melissa, uh, Cash at the clerk Michelle. up there? Michelle Cash. Michelle the, Cash, the, okay. The, uh, clerk for Lyon Township. Yes, and uh, I talked to uh, this fellow, David Harriman, today. I've never met the man. David Harriman's the building enforcement officer of Lyon yeah. Township. When you found out that the Lyon, Lyon Township sewer system would not be coming down the county line from 12 mile to 11 mile and then through the the property of the... Uh, blah, 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 Shing Company, the Shing development, okay, along that line and joint, going through that 30 acres just to the north of you, okay, which is a landlocked piece right on the Dexboro line where Dexboro went through, okay. Then you found out there's no hope for 
sanitary sewer and water line, a trunk coming through there. Okay, so then you say, well, I'm going to, for then, then you say, I'm going to block annex to the city. Okay, that's fine. We love it. In fact, if I the may. The thing of it is, okay, you're a thousand feet from any trunk line, okay, for connection with sewer and water. And we're not obligated to give it to you. You'd have to pay for that big time, okay, to get a trunk line to hook up, okay? And that, I don't see it's feasible, okay? For this, this, this thing, to, it's, it's a, sure, it looks beautiful on paper, but uh, in the history has shown that you, you buy it and have plans and then nothing gets done. In the meantime, that house, which is, which would be a 200, and, if it was brand new, it'd be a $450,000 house. As a used house, it's 275. But to tear that down, when you could just move it 150 feet and build something feasible around it, okay, for senior aftercare centers or health facilities or something, instead add 24 apartments that are just pie in the sky. I don't think it'll ever happen. It, what you have, you could do something with. And you, okay, you continually like to knock down the trees. I was in the tree business years ago, sir, and I handled my walnut trees. Those walnut trees are not export veneer, <clears> but <throat> they are top grade saw log, uh, long stem, double hearted with darker wood on the inside, and they're worth $10,000. <laughs> on a stump. And it would be a shame to <clears throat> cut those beautiful trees and just bulldoze them out of there for nothing, if nothing else ever goes on there. So I'm just saying I got reservations on the sincerity of your development because you're, you're, the development seven mile, eight mile, uh, Mr. Riverbank. Mayor, which comments would you prefer I respond to of Councilman, Councilman Richards? Richards. Right. I'm happy okay, to answer all of I understand, I understand. Okay. I'm in favor of, I know you're going to get your extension, okay, good for you, but I'm not going to vote for it this time. I, was, I voted for the last time for you, but you haven't been completely truthful with us in the whole thing. That's my statement on it. Well, Councilmember Richards, Mr. Langdon has made it pretty clear that if you'd like to have a private okay. phone conversation right. with him, he would probably be able to assist you in what it is you're looking for. Mr. Langdon, if you would like to respond to any of that, please feel free. Uh, but it was a um, multi-leveled question there. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. And Mr. Richards, if I fail in any way, please remind me. So I'll go in reverse order. Uh, as you will see... And you can take all the time to review this as you like. There are, there are nine, as I recall, there are nine mature walnut trees along this is uh, Dixboro Road. I have a total of 15 walnut trees, and I've had foresters or log, log cutters or timber buyers come out and assess the value of those trees, and they are valuable. They're quite valuable. But we made the decision to keep nine of the 15 of them because we could and they're beautiful trees and they're mature trees. And hopefully that's a satisfactory number. The Planning Com Commission thought so. We've, we've preserved nine, I think nine, if it's eight or if it's 10, I'm not exactly sure. So I hope that helps to calm those fears down. You'll also see that our site is heavily landscaped. We took, uh, we took pains to make it very green, very well shielded uh, or well well planted to address any neighbor, neighboring property concerns that, uh, that we feel is going to bring a very high quality presentation of this apartment complex to the community. Um, I will elect not to take personally your concerns that I'm not going to do anything. I think you have me confused with somebody else. I have no history of saying one thing and doing another, and I just don't take that personally, but I can assure you that this project will be built. Now, somebody may buy it. I'm not saying that. If somebody were to come along and buy it, that would be okay. But I have a personal plan with money and financing that I'm going to be a principal of this company and build and develop and own this project 
barring somebody paying me a ridiculously large amount of money that they probably shouldn't pay me. And I'll go on record and say that. Okay, well, let me ask you another. In other words, you're telling this council that you would stick to your original plan rather than just wait for the interest rates to uh, go up a little bit and then try to get a gas station in there. And I'm not smart like enough to play that kind of game, sir. I'm here before you telling you that tomorrow morning I'm buying permits to get this development started before the snow flies with money in hand. That's what I'm telling this council in no uncertain terms. Thank you. Councilmember Kurtzwell, Councilmember Parisian made a motion to speak first. Go ahead. Um, I will Attorney Langton, can you take that picture that's in front of us too and swivel it around so people can see Absolutely. in the audience because it looks like there's interest as well. Well, there's a, is it okay if I use this easel? easel? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Is um, oh, this is yeah, okay. we'll end it there. But it looks like we have further discussion. I was going to make the motion. Right. Awesome. Yeah, I think Councilmember okay. Kurtzwell has something to add. Councilmember Kurtzwell, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Langdon, I know of you. Um, we have um, battled in court. Uh, you've True. been an excellent adversary. Thank you. Um, and I likewise. Wish, <laughs> um, I do represent some real estate developers, and I wish you were one of my clients. Um, I think what it is is that we have um, a misunderstanding sometimes of how developers work. And it's not uncommon for a developer to purchase uh, seven, eight, nine pieces of property and wait for a proper economic timing with respect to either selling and take the gain or to develop and uh, hold on to it or to develop it and then sell it. So there's a lot of different things that one can do with real estate. And, and, and no one um, opportunity is the same as another opportunity with real estate. So you can't really pigeonhole your business model and, and say, well, why aren't you doing this and why aren't you doing this? Because maybe, maybe your business model doesn't call for that. And we're not privy to every little detail of the business model that you're using to uh, develop this project. Um, I would like to uh, remind uh, the gentleman to my left that the uh, city of South Lyon has owned Volunteer Park and has done minimal development, and that's been over 20 years. So it's not unusual for somebody to hold real estate until you either have the funds, the money, the approval, or maybe you just want to hold on to it. Uh, we had an individual um, that recently passed away that held on to real estate in our downtown area. And, uh, I'm familiar. Yeah, so, so I don't think you're doing anything that is unusual, that is out of the ordinary. Uh, you have a plan. It's been approved by the... Uh, planning Commission, you have funds, which you don't have to tell me where your money is coming from. It's none of my business. All that I care about is that a viable um, a unit with, with houses where we're going to get tax monies and individuals walking into our downtown and adding to the population downtown, that's the goal that I'm interested in. But other than that, um, I am quite confident that uh, you will um, uh, develop this property. And, and you know what? If you can sell it and make a buck, good for you. I wish I was part of that partnership, well, but I don't you. have the money to be part of it. So, Appreciate so the good comments. luck to you. I will just restate in, in very, very clear terms, it is absolutely our, our aim mm -hmm. to get this done as quickly as possible. And I'll remind the council that this is not the only time frame in the agreement. We have, an, we have a one year to get uh, our first building permit, I believe it is, and then we have another year and a half after that to get a CFO. So we're, we're, we're not absolved from the ticking clock. This is just a situation where we asked for the extension and applied for final site plan approval within the time frame that was given to us, or that we negotiated in the agreement. And with pointing no fingers, we all just couldn't get it done in time. Councilmember Kibble, please. I have one more question. Actually, you have three years from the time that if we approve this, three years to complete the project. Very well. What's our our leverage in the event that that's not complete by then? To visit the resulting in the uh, conditional rezoning being uh, revoked. Yes, Mr. Mayor. So under the agreement, the uh, the, re the zoning which was subject to the conditions of build, constructing a certain development would be revoked on its own terms and it would revert back to its original zoning. So remember, this is part of the purpose of this is to keep 
the developer on task because a partially finished development, you, you want to finish it. You don't want to have it stalled and, and have somebody walk away. So the idea here was to continue to keep the developer on a timeline that's achievable so that they can proceed and complete the development without being rushed, but not let it languish either. My concern is, okay, in the event that there's a change of financial position in America and we run into a 2008 or something. So you've got two of the three buildings are complete. The third one languishes, wondering whether or not you want to put the money into it. So are we going to repeal the zoning that the, the two con completed construction? That, that's a less clear, clear question. And this property really would be no, no different than any other property that's under development. You, you don't want a half finished development. So if, if it were yeah. you know, a nationwide economic recession, that, that's really out of our control. Uh, I think the purpose of this agreement was to implement a schedule that was achievable for the developer and to keep them on task and make and complete the development. I can't hold you to this, but I would like to ask, do you have a, a sense of which structure you plan on starting with? Yes, uh, and, and I'll also, in answering your question, add to uh, Mr. Wilhelm's comments. So from the beginning, this was always intended to be a single phase development. So we're going in with our, with our investment dollars and our bank dollars, and quite frankly, our contracts with our, with our, our contractors to view this as a single phase development. Sweet, good, okay. Which, which would reduce the likelihood I mean, the, you know, in, in 08, the banks pulled the pin on halfway funded projects sure. and they got sued to death and everything and blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, barring some major league problems, we are, we are entering this with eye on a, a single effort to complete the project um, on site the whole time. Mm -hmm. And to that, I believe our intention, I'm, I'm not really the construction arm of... But, but I believe our intention is to build this building first, building three. Yeah, building three. Okay. Anybody that, so the, the point is, is that as we go in and do our land development and start building this building, as we're building these buildings, this building is kind of off to, the, to itself and isn't going to be impacted by the continued presence of heavy trucks and loud noises and lots of diesel engines. I like the idea in that it incentivizes the idea of your dispatching of this project as quickly as possible rather than creating a revenue stream from one building being operational and then you just kind of piecemeal work on the other two. So I'm happy to hear that your intentions Thank are you. yeah. to go yeah, in we, one We have it all swoop. pro forma out including partial occupancy but our, our financing is intended to cover the entire project at one time. Thank you. Councilmember Kurtzwell, go ahead. Um, I've always found on construction projects, the problem isn't building the structure, it's doing the site improvements and the land balancing. What, um, I mean, that's just, you know, the hills, the topography. Uh, how long do you think it's going to take to clear land and, and, and balance everything so that you can get your site improvements in? Well, I'm very glad you asked that question because in part of my life I owned a site work and underground excavating company. Oh. And this job should take three months oh, well, or less. I got a question. That's nothing. Get her Thank done. you. <laughs> I'd, Thank I'd you. like to make a motion that we approve. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, if I could just interrupt. Yes. I noticed on the agenda note that I missed uh, in the suggested motion, I have a 60-day reference. I thought I had caught that and cleaned this up, but it is would we extend to eight months to a full year, August 27 of 2019? The Planning Commission has already reviewed the final site plan and subject to this extension, approved the final site plan. So by doing this, they will have their final site plan approval, barring and, and complying with other conditions imposed by the Planning Commission. 
So I just wanted to point out that 60 day reference is incorrect. So it should so say eight to please, 12 months. Yeah, please say what this state, what the accurate. So it would be, term a, would be. I think I had it as it's four months. So it's eight months to one full year, four months or 120 days. A hundred and twenty days. Right. Twenty days is four months. Yeah. Correct. All right. I thought it was eight months or, or twelve months. You said, Jim. Eight months was well, they were allowed eight months. Right. Well, you're going to extend, extend it. Extend it to twelve. 12 yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's a four additional months. Okay. I'd, I'd like to approve the resolution approving LV Holding LLC's timely request for a hundred and twenty day extension of the time period for final site plan approval in paragraph four A of the conditional rezoning agreement for the real property located at 825 West Lake Street, tax ID 21-30-126-005, and authorize the city manager to sign a letter agreement to that effect. Okay, I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Councilmember Richards has made it clear that he has a comment, so we will discuss. Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Lang, I'm sure things are going your way. I want. It hasn't been said on this council exactly what your acreage is. Is it, it is 4.4 acres? I'm to understand. Is that correct? I'm not seeing it. Well, it does. It, sa it says that in the Lyon Township documents that I've got. I don't want to take an official position on this because I don't know. Some part of me believes that it's 4.65. But it's okay. four and change. Okay, so it's, a, it's stated in the council minutes, okay? S second point, uh, you acknowledge that you're at least 1,000 feet from a trunk line for sewer and water to get to that property. I acknowledge no such thing. I am not a civil engineer. I have not undertaken a study of the sanitary sewer presence or absence in the, okay. in the city. My civil engineer has assured me that this design includes adequate services within close enough proximity for us to go forward with it. We have engineering construction cost estimates. We have contractor estimates. And, and I trust the people that I pay to consult me. Okay, well, I will leave it at that. Uh, I'm just stating the, my point on it, okay? Very well, understood. Now, the next, the last point, do you have any intention of purchasing the adjoining five acres or six or eight acres of the Chuck Smith property that, that L shapes out to Pontiac Trail? I mean, I mean, what am I saying? Lake Street, okay, where the Thomas uh, Duke sign is out there? That's swampland. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, do you have any intention? Are you trying to sell me some swamp land? Because that's, that's state regulated and I can't build in it. Okay. I'm not, I'm not trying to be smart, but. It, okay, but it, I'm just saying. I have not. I, I, I've been asked to ask I, you I have some knowledge of the property to my east and to my south. What's the pertinence? I mean, it's, it's Okay, you have a history of filling in swamps. Pardon me? You have a history of. Filling, filling in wetlands, okay? Your company does. Sir, I do not Mr. have Man any Pass. such history. Okay, all right. Point of order, I don't see where the relevance of this line of questioning is relevant to your site okay. approval that we are providing with you tonight. Thank you. And I would ask that the mayor um, suggest that the gentleman to my left uh, cease this questioning. Okay, so I concede. Councilman Richards, I believe Mr. Lang has made it pretty clear that if you have a laundry list of questions that he would take your phone call as well. We can get together some other time. I would be delighted, sir. That's fine. So we have a motion and a second. A motion by Councilmember Kivel, supported by Councilmember Kennedy, to approve the resolution approving LV Holding <coughs> LLC's timely request for a 120-day extension of the time period for final site plan approval in paragraph 4A of the conditional rezoning agreement for the real property located at 825 West Lake Street, tax ID 21-30-126-005, and authorize the city manager to sign a, a letter of agreement to that effect. All of those in favor? Aye. 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 All of those opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much for your consideration, Council. Thank Good you. luck Thank to you. you. Thank you, Mr. Lane. Thank you.
moving on to new business number two this evening. Resolutions to adopt and implement a local agency pavement warranty program. Mr. Mayor, I can address this matter as well. Thank you, Tim. So you have tonight two different resolutions. One's, one to adopt a local agency pavement warranty program and a second to implement it. And this is largely driven by the state statute. These forms are uh, really prepared. I didn't, I, I'm filling in the blank. These were prepared by a task force that was reviewed. Uh, they put together these documents. They were reviewed by MDOT and these apply to paving projects with typically it applies to $2 million worth of paving components when it involves state or federal funding. I've been advised through the city's engineer that you have not had one of those projects with that level of funding mm -hmm. in their experience. Uh, you have not in mine. Um, but nonetheless, you're required to adopt and implement this. You could always choose to implement and, and impose a warranty on any of your projects. Um, but really that $2 million threshold is where the statutory require, reporting requirements and the consideration of a warranty program are triggered. So this is really a state shove down kind of concept. I don't know that it will be something that you really have to deal with front and center given the size of your community. Councilmember Kimball, go ahead. Well, we're obligated to act on this, but at the same time, uh, especially when the, the remedies for uh, uh, having to implement a warranty, I mean, it, it can fail within five, or if it goes five years, that, you know, that's the end of the warranty. Well, in the meantime, you've added substantial amounts of cost in all the, the testing and proofing and all that kind of thing. So I think that it's really counterproductive and it's sort of one of those unintended um, mandates that, that they end up throwing on us and we're the one picking up the pieces financially. So, Mr. Mayor, so in my discussion with the city engineer, I wanted to find out what they knew and what their experience with these warranties was. And th that was generally his comment was they're very, exp they add a quite a bit of cost and many communities elect not to use a warranty even when they've met, met the threshold simply for that very reason. Mm -hmm. But it is, if you read the rationale behind the state legislation, it's really to create a uniform system so that paving contractors and the communities implementing it have a structure within which to deal with uh, problems in a paving project. It actually simplifies it. things and gets more reliable performance out of big job contractors, Correct. but that's not where we're at. So. Correct. I got a question. Councilman Richards, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Tim, uh, I'm sure we'll go along with this uh, warranty. Uh, my question is, are we assured that with this warranty that our engineers, HRC, will be monitoring the batch mix of concrete that goes into any road that we have a concrete resurfacing and also the batch of the asphalt where we pour asphalt, such as Hagedorn Street asphalt, Liberty Street concrete? Do we have assurance that HRC is going to be monitoring that we get the right batch mix in this? They always do. So, Mr. Mayor, it's a technical question, and this is really just a program for implementing a state set up and available warranty program. I don't, I can't speak to the details of what is in the warranty program and how it's administered, but it's essentially an administrative program that provides for a warranty based on whether it's asphalt or concrete paving, given certain parameters. And you could always do these things, so I, I don't know how to answer your question other than it's much too technical for what's being considered by council. Tonight. Okay, okay, thank you. All right. I'd like to make a motion that we we uh, approve the adoption of the local agency pavement warranty program. A second. We have a motion by Council Member Kivill, supported by Council Member Kennedy. Mr. Mayor. Tim. Yes. So I. Again, there's a separate one to adopt. I was going to do that after okay. this one's approved. Oh, oh, sorry, I misunderstood. Okay, my apologies. Fair, fair enough. 
So again, uh, we have a motion by Councilmember Kivel, supported by Councilmember Kennedy, to approve the resolutions to adopt and implement a local agency pavement warranty program as presented. Is there any further discussion on the first one? No. All of those in favor? Aye. 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 All of those opposed? Motion passes. If I could, I'd like to make the uh, motion to approve the resolution to implement a local pavement warranty program. A second. We have a motion by Councilmember Kibble, supported by Councilmember Kennedy, to implement the warranty program as presented. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Uh, aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Motions pass. Thank you. Uh, new business number three this evening, UV system completion, bank two, <clears throat> bank one already approved and completed. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, the explanation of the topic, the wastewater treatment plant is requesting to purchase UV modules and ballasts to complete the renovation already started, which is already 50% complete, and the entire UV disinfection system. This is designed to disinfect the treated wastewater to meet our permit requirements as stated in the e EGLE inspection reports. We do have the cost breakdown for the modules as well as the ballast. The total cost would be $22,299, which is covered in this year's budget under line item 592-557-970. Uh, the request also is to waive the com competitive bid process and equipment is proprietary to Wed Cohen, represented by Kennedy Industries in, in Michigan. We've attached the quote and invoices as well as some photos of the equipment for you to get an idea what, what the equipment look like looks like. So we have two motions. One is to waive uh, the South Line Code of Ordinances for the approval of the purchase. And the second one is supported to actually approve the purchase. Our utilities director is here to answer any questions that you may have regarding this. You do have in front of you, uh, based upon the request, and notice that we did have a mistake within this because we didn't have the two motions included. Um, a new agenda note uh, for you to review. Councilmember Kibble? I just happened to notice one invoice that uh, speaks to the idea of an AC unit, uh, 6,000 BTU for $59.95. Um, that's nowhere in the bid that you're So that was actually already purchased. Of. Yeah, so that should not have been included, okay. actually. That, that's not required. They, they already did that on the first phase. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Councilmember Kennedy. To do it. Uh, basically, we're just we're just replicating what we already did with the first phase, right? We're, yep, so. we're basically halfway there, and just want to get the rest of the UV system completely intact. Oh, and I'd like to go ahead and make the motion to uh, to waive Section 2 224 of the City of South Line Court, uh, Code of Ordinances, approval for purchases or contracts over two thousand dollars, competitive bidding for purchases uh, or bidding over five thousand dollars, because no advantage to the city will result from competitive bidding. I'll second. We have a motion from Councilmember Kennedy, supported by Councilmember Parisian. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Mr. Motion passes. Uh, Councilmember Kennedy, go ahead. And I'd like to make the motion to uh, approve the purchase of the final bank of lights and ballast for $22,299 to render this UV renovation project complete. Okay. <laughs> we have a motion by Councilmember Kennedy, supported by Councilmember Parisian, to approve the purchase of the final bank of lights and ballast for $22,299 to render this UV renovation project complete. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Just one quick question, Doug. Sure. Do, you, do you have, uh, what's the expected life expectancy on a unit like this? Just ballpark. Any idea? I have five to ten years, probably. Okay. If I had to guess. Just curious. And, they, and that's up to us, too, at the plant, too. It's, we try to keep and maintain it as best as we can. And like anything else, everything has a shelf life, whether it be the front end loader or the bulb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. That's great. I appreciate it. Thanks. Yep. Good job on your motions. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, we'll move on to new business number four, the purchase of concrete scarifier. Is that how you it that? Yes, right. the Department of Public Works is requesting to purchase the concrete scare fighter to, for, to prepare for line striping and grinding and leveling potential trip hazards on city sidewalks and streets. This piece of equipment qualifies for grant funding or the MMRMA program up to 50%. Uh, we do have on there for the uh, EDCO 
gas scarifier at EDCO startup pack. Total cost, cost is $5,258 and is covered in this year's annual budget under 4407 the uh, lowest bid of the three bids received was from Ace, Ace Equipment. We've attached a copy of the photo of the equipment, and there is a motion uh, for that purchase. And Doug is here to answer any other questions you may have on that as well. Councilmember Kivel. I, I just wanted to make a comment it, that if this thing works well, it's going to be in service a long time because we have so many lips on sidewalks oh, yeah. that this thing could address. And um, uh, yeah, and. And we haven't been getting an awful lot of people that are voluntarily deciding to pay us to change flags out on their front of the property. So I'm we looking forward to this. Today, we found one today. Actually. Terrific. So we're gonna, I'm going to be meeting with him, that gentleman this week. So <clears throat> yeah, hopefully fantastic. We'll have one 50-50 guy contributing. Good deal. <laughs> That's a, that actually is quite a nice incentive. And I don't think that we are, we probably should be a little bit more robust in uh, pretty much putting that, that message out there that it's available. So definitely. Yeah, I agree. Councilmember Kennedy, and then I'm coming down to you, Councilmember Kurzel. Yeah, I'd like to uh, just commend the uh, the folks that were involved in uh, in securing the grant for 50 percent of the uh, the cost of that effort uh, of the equipment. I think that's that's commendable. It obviously makes the the purchase that much more attractive. Uh, we have discussed this previously. We discussed it during the uh, uh, the budget uh, budget uh, preparation workshops and so forth. And I'd like to go ahead and make the motion to approve the purchase of the EDCO concrete scarifier for $5,258. Councilmember Kurtzwell, you had something to add? Yeah, I'll second the motion and then, then. Um, I did have a question about uh, the equipment. Uh, some of these uh, equipment pieces will actually take and um, level the side, they'll smooth it out. Mm -hmm. So if there's like a crack, it will go and you'll kind of see it on an incline. Is that what this will do? Uh, mostly just grind. It'll it just, just grind grinds. away. Yeah, and it also design is designed to grind away and prep surfaces for striping. And so the downtown, the, the game plan for this scarifier, essentially is going to be to beautify or however you want to say it, the downtown lines. So all the parking lines make sense a little bit better. That's the future of the project of what we're going to do with this. But we will do some grinding as well too. So. Excellent. Yeah, I'll make something. I'm glad you're on board. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so we have a motion by Councilmember Kennedy, supported by Councilmember Kurtzwell, to approve the purchase of the EDCO concrete scarifier for $5,258. Councilmember Richards, you had something to add? Yes, I just want to say we've needed this for a long time. Okay, I hope we get a warranty on this item. This oh, is, yes, there will be This one. isn't a, uh item that makes a terrazzo floor. No. But it, it does take off the the hump and the, and the brake that, that knocks people off their bicycles and uh, wheelchairs and one thing or another okay when they're going over curbs and and so forth it's, it's a wonderful addition no doubt. thank you we have a motion and a second all of those in favor aye aye, aye. 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 all opposed motion passes thanks for being here doug thank you no problem. thank you doug <laughs> We'll move on to the budget this evening. Does anyone have anything on the budget? Councilmember Kurtzwell, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just two points. Uh, I, I read the July 24th letter from um, Plant Moran. I was a little bit concerned about one of the statements that they actually made in there. It says, we have identified the following significant risks of misstatement. So... Um, are you familiar with that? I'll review that. I've not seen that document. Yeah, yeah. This this is a pretty significant um, point that they are making. It it's regarding overstatement of revenue balances. So, I think um, if you have a moment tonight, if I could sort of discuss this with you, uh, that'll be great. The other issue is: is there any way that the department heads can have access to the um, system? And I don't know if they, I don't think they do now. The, the system where they can get into the budget, for example, we'll use uh, Doug as an example. He had, let's say, his capital outlay is $24,000. Tonight he goes and gets approval, a total of, you know, $30,000 or, or whatever, you know, uh, it gets approved tonight. 
within a week, is he able to go into that budget himself and look at his line items to see how much money he has left? Or does he have to physically come over here to City Hall and meet with the finance administrator and get that information? Usually what transpires is everybody gets a copy of the current budget and the numbers and the expenditures that uh, on a monthly basis so anybody can see what the revenues and expenditure, er, expenditures are for the whole budget. They usually and would review before a purchase and make contact with the department to find out what monies are available and to ensure that they are going according to what the budgeted amounts actually are. So they do not necessarily get into the budget, but they do have a copy of it, and they can review it at any particular time because they get a monthly report just like you do. And, and why don't we allow them? I'm just curious for the argument as to why we don't allow department heads to have more real-time access to the budget. This is, this is not about changing any numbers in the budget. This is about view-only mode where they can access that budget anytime, 24-7, and take a look at where they stand in real time with the budget rather than waiting for a monthly report. Well, the real-time numbers potentially change on a, could potentially change on a daily basis, and it's better that they do, in fact, make contact with the department with the department head, the finance, to find out what those numbers are. We can review a particular policy to see if they, they can look at numbers more up to date than what they have, but by providing a monthly report, they know exactly what's there, but they know that these numbers are changing daily based upon expenditures and based upon check runs. I just had an opportunity to speak with some individuals at uh, another city, and that seemed to be a tremendous advantage to their department heads to have that kind of access. Um, to do. I mean, they were on this monthly reporting and went to more of a um, real time being able to look at that budget. I, I'm just bringing it up for discussion. Okay. But it doesn't have to happen. I just was curious. It worked for one community. I know we're not, I don't, I don't think we're doing it here. But that's all I have on the budget. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Kill, go ahead. Well, if I could, I would, I'd like to ask what you see as the benefit of that. I mean, the, the, the money is meted out at July, and it's, it's spent down during the course of the year. So why would it change? The numbers are changing. Like he said, if, if I were Doug in two weeks, I may want to make another capital expenditure, but do I make it now or do I wait until, you know, three months from now, four months from now, five months from now? I, I think the feedback that I got was that it allows individuals to have a better understanding of where they stand in terms of their expenditures um, when they have real-time access to the budget. It works very well for other communities. Uh, so it would be things that hadn't been addressed in the budget and then they suddenly want to buy something? Could be. I mean, that could be one of the reasons why somebody would want. And it's view-only mode. The mode is only view only. They're not, they can't make any additions or changes. They can't alter anything. This is simply a view only mode. It has, um, I think this software has a tracking where anybody who gets into it with their password will be tracked when they got into it. Well, so, anybody would do that. Yeah, so, I, don't, I just don't understand how nothing that's going on in our departments are going to end up being influenced by the spur of a moment kind of decision that isn't going to be reflected the position of where they're at now mm -hmm. won't end up changing so substantively that they couldn't act on something or forecast whether an embellishment could come out of general fund maybe if they had some emergent thing that needed to be addressed. So I, I guess I just don't understand where, where the instant review would end no, up being I mean, a I real think assist. That, I mean, that's an argument, you know, that you make. Um, I'm just going off of experience of feedback that other department heads in another city um, have found it extremely useful. They have a lot more transactions. It's a larger yeah, sure. city. Makes sense. So I just thought I would bring it up. Thank you. Anyone else with anything on the budget this evening? No. Nope. Great. We'll move on to the manager's report. Uh, a few comments I want to make regarding the city water supply. The new well has been installed and tested in McCady Park. Next phase is going to be con uh, connecting the pump and building the new well house around the structure around the item around the uh, well. Uh, auditors are here from Plant Rand fi finishing up. We expect that we'll make an audit presentation the last council meeting in September 
or the first council meeting in October. Uh, we've already engaged Plant Moran to start with the water and sewer analysis as, well, as was identified in this year's budget. The purpose is to analyze our cost structure and determine our future rates for water and sewer so we can make the necessary improvements and repairs to our water and sewer infrastructure. And this will, work will commence right after the completion of this year's audit. Uh, we are getting ready to uh, demo those two buildings uh, that we talked about within this year's budget, one being at McCaddy Park and the other the Slayer building. I'm engaging the contractor first to do the asbestos inspection to determine the extent of that and what removal techniques we may need to have at that location, those locations. Uh, cemetery update, I did want to bring up uh, a couple items. Uh, one is our DPW staff and office personnel have, were going through in great detail to identify um, the cemetery stones that were left damaged at the cemetery that we were discovered last Thursday. Um, we um, went out there, uh, took photographs of all the particular locations. We field, fielded hundreds of calls, contacts with staff. Uh, numerous personnel have been talking with uh, obviously concerned residents and people who have loved ones that are buried at the cemetery. Uh, we were um, engaging conversations with our insurance company regarding um, the damages that did occur on site. Uh, we started to uh, ascertain how many um, locations were actually damaged within the cemetery. There were police reports that were actually created that did, did identify locations. Um, we did have some, I'm sure, with all good intentions, some good Samaritans that started to re-stand up some of the stones within the cemetery. We did make the request to the public for that not to happen because we were worried about further damage. It also prevented us from further identifying the exact locations of the stones because we did have uh, preliminary conversations with a monument company uh, to try to give us a guesstimate on costs and based upon the numbers of stones that were damaged and that needed to be reset. Uh, with the next day, we uh, did start to review, went out um, meticulously through the whole cemetery, identifying with employee from the DPW and employee from the office that knew the cemetery better than anybody based upon locations, lots, and numbers, and have put together a spreadsheets in identifying those locations. In the meantime, there were some more stones that were actually put up. And we did make contact with the uh, memorial company and Inch Memorial was out there to um, give us some estimate and through their good intentions and their um, assistance have uh, repaired numerous stones to the cemetery at no cost to the city. And we'd like to thank them for all the work that they've done. Um, we have been in further contact with them because we were trying to identify other locations and we need to um, make a guesstimate on those costs. Um, my recommendation is that you know the city would um, take on some of those costs themselves if they are not going to continue to do that and we can't fully expect them but they've done a, a great job and a great service to this community in making those repairs at no cost to us. Uh, we also did have, um, uh, I did receive an email from uh, a law firm within town that wants to contribute $500 for information that leads to the arrest of the persons who did this particular work. And we potentially uh, would get additional dollars for that as well because we definitely want to find out who did this work and prosecute them to the full extent of the law. Um, we have discussed uh, also uh, additional security at the cemetery uh, and how we do that, but obviously I don't want to discuss what those methods are and I'll obviously let that out. Um, with the public and how we're doing some of those things. Um, my understanding was something like this had occurred within the cemetery approximately 10 years ago. Um, I know other cemeteries where some things like this has happened um, and it's uh, catastrophic to those who do have uh, loved ones that are buried there and it definitely does hit home. It was covered uh, by numerous news crews and because of that it did get the work at word out through Facebook and through uh, other social media and we did have a um, regular occurrence of vehicles driving through there for Thursday, Friday, so the weekend and this morning I was out there again and there were still people that were driving through just ensuring uh, what had transpired. But we're trying to get a full account of all the items that were damaged at the cemetery. Uh, we'll make that report and assist the police department and try to uh, uh, apprehend the individuals that actually did that. Actually did that. Um, we do want to make sure that uh, the people are going to be aware 
of this uh, reward that is uh, posted by the law firm. And I may brought up again like, during council comments, um, but whether people want to make contributions, but it is to the uh, assist with the arrest uh, of the individuals and by providing information for that, uh, we will not necessarily hold that money, but that money will be um, uh, dedicated and paid based upon whatever tr uh, transpires uh, through this time period, but I believe it's up to six months uh, from the time that the actual occurrence uh, did happen. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have regarding that, and I just want to give one more uh, council comment regarding uh, Michigan Seamless Tube. All of you do have a packet in front of you this evening. Uh, it is scheduled to go on the August 26th City Council meeting. Uh, the information is provided to you uh, through the city attorney with, uh, uh, with a letter and ask if you have comments regarding this, that you get it back to myself or the attorney by the August 19th date. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that, uh, that you may have. Councilmember Friesen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Paul, I have a question regarding a couple months ago, I had asked about estimates for going green. So say for instance, we go the route of getting rid of paper all in entirely and getting iPads or Surface Pros or something along those lines and even keeping them here, but just having them so we can cut back the paper flow. How's that coming along? Uh, the first estimates that I had, and I uh, spoke with our uh, IT professionals, uh, was approximately $800 per uh, pad with all the information loaded on um, uh, that council members could uh, review packets. You get the information, we would download that information or email those things, perhaps in, in, in uh, uh, numerous emails. Uh, we'd have to go through a training session as well. I know not all council members wanted to have that. Some council members wanted to just continue um, to have um, uh, those packets. Mm -hmm. So the estimate would still be just under $5,000 to be able to do that. We had not budgeted that within, within this year's 2019-20 um, uh, budget, um, but those are just preliminary numbers based upon the type of um, uh, items that we would purchase for each member. So just to recap, that was just one company that you looked into? Well, we spoke with our IT professionals and asked them regarding getting us an estimate for uh, the best cost for what would uh, the council members would actually be using the items and for. And that would be $800 per council member? That's correct. And I, I, and I can get firmer numbers for you, but those are preliminary numbers. Sorry to not give those numbers to you no, at, okay. at, at a earlier date. It's a rough date. estimate. I appreciate it. But... Um, that's whether or not the council members want to use them or not. So say we give it as an option, so that way people who still want to use like um, hard copies, they have that ability, but at least in the event in the future this whole council goes green, we have seven of them. And we would like to completely go green if possible because that, and if you're making four packets or you're making 12 packets, it's still taking the initiative of an individual setting the time aside and let in a copy or run and just binding those last few packets is not that much more time, but uh, concentrating efforts to assemble packets. So if you do all of them or none of them, that's, you know, that's probably the best way to go. But of course you can still go green and we can still save a lot of trees in the process. Well, a lot of money, a lot of time. We could be putting our time and money elsewhere if we're not making what, how many packets, how right. many pages for each packet, binding each packet, scanning and uploading, et cetera. Right. So I think that time could be better put to use. Um, but with that being said, it's not budgeted for this fiscal year. However, is there a way that we could discuss making room in the budget for it? Of course you can. Council can make that motion at any given time regarding um, you know, requests to uh, search and get uh, bids for the items. And Council, you can uh, make an amendment to the, the budget at any time. It's only 2800 bucks. I mean, that... uh, under 5000 is that what we said? Oh, I'm sorry, 5600 Yes, yeah, excuse exactly. me. Right. If council's comfortable with it, I'd like to make that motion that we look into it. Sorry, go ahead. Councilman Kennedy, go ahead. No, you said to get what hardware? An iPad? Or are we talking about the Surface Pro? There were, I believe the Surface. I'll have to look at the exact items. But what I can do is I, I can provide that information to me with your next council update, and yeah. then you can make a, a better, better, better educated one. Yeah. Exactly. Managing this information. Right. So, you know, we're not looking for the least expensive option. We're looking for the one that's most appropriate for right us. and those and those were approximate dollars like i said they were given by it people but what i can do is within my now, next council update i'll provide you more information to get a more firmer number so you'll be able if you want to make that particular motion you'll be a bit informed okay, about let's making do that. It. how's that i would be yes i'm 100 percent on board okay. um another question as well i'm sorry 
so that number that we're talking about, this rough estimate, would that include training? Or is that going to be separate costs? It'd be additional costs because I don't know the extent of level of training that everybody has here regarding use of those items or the type of programs that we're actually going to be downloading on them. I assumed it would be. I anticipated it would be. But just good to know and good for the record. So thank you. Does anyone else have anything for Paul? Is well, it's only in that it, there is, it would matter. You get on a different platform. You're familiar with one, one outfit getting somebody else's uh, OS could be kind of dicey, I don't know, for your starting over. So I'd, I'd like to have a little run through with a, a surface before I could really make my mind up. Yeah, and I'll get that range based upon a couple of different uh, items that we potentially, that you could have for in use, whether it's you know, $800 to $1,000 or whatever it may be based upon items, and which ones have better use to council members. Thank you, Paul. Anyone else with anything for the city manager tonight? Okay, great. We'll move on to public comment. Please remember to state your name and address. Uh, Ryan Lair, 716 Grand Court. Mr. Richards, your comments tonight were absolutely deplorable to Mr. Langan. Um, I don't know what information you uh, acquired in your pretty usually good about acknowledging your facts but this gentleman seems to be very intent on doing what he's doing and uh, I uh, you know when you have a, another council member uh, requesting that you cease your comments uh, because you're sitting here downright attacking this man I'm going to tell you right now that if I get on this council you're not going to be attacking people with this microphone you're going to show everybody with respect this man was like trying, he was caught in a deer, light, deer with a headlight, caught in a car. He, he didn't know what to do. And, uh, it, you know, it's the Planning Commission uh, approved uh, his, his thing. And um, I, I ask that you show the citizens and the people that come up to this microphone with sincere respect. Thank you. All right, we will close pub public comment. Uh, before we go to council comments this evening, uh, Chief Vogel, do you have anything? Uh, real quick, um, the good and the bad and the ugly. The good is the locker rooms are done, the bathrooms are done, they look great. Excellent. Um, the good and the bad, we had a fatal car crash in the city yeah. Uh, yeah. Friday morning. Um, the really bad news is our equipment quit, and it was catastrophic. Uh, we found out that the motor's all done, it can't be fixed. Um, so luckily, Green Oak had an extra. They're temporarily letting us borrow. Um, I'm planning on working with Paul to kind of figure out what our solution is going to be. Okay. So we have working jaws of life right now but they're borrowed okay um we took the unit to cougar motor in novi and they said it was completely shot mm. we then caught a hold of the manufacturer and they've gone out of business so we are kind of scrambling to come up with some answers so okay. I'm, i was on the phone all afternoon trying to figure out something i got really lucky that green oak had an extra right. so that's where we're at any questions Councilmember Kivel, go ahead. Yeah, I was curious. Uh, are, are all of them? Do they all couple up to the same pump? No. So okay. we bought. We, we received this item. It's older by grant. I don't know if you're on council. If you mm -hmm. remember when we got it, I think it's. No, I don't remember the okay. year, but I remember getting it. And it's an unusual brand. Um, they're not in Michigan anymore. So I called around, and it looks like we're going to have some trouble. Um, I'm trying to find. Maybe we can buy a used one. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to do. So it, they were able to start the extrication, get the roof flapped, and then it quit. And oh. it seized the motor, and it's broken. And nice. I don't think it's worth putting money into it yet. It's an unusual product, so we're kind of, you know, I hope to have more update in two weeks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some plan with Paul. So. Is the hydraulic unit 
remote from the so mm -hmm. yeah because I was that's just old, te old technology is you have a power unit that has hydraulics that has hoses that works the tools today's technology it's all battery they've okay. gotten rid of gas engines it's all battery okay so that's what we're weighing well thanks for getting that covered for yeah uh, unfortunately he you know we got him alive to the hospital unfortunately he died there mm -hmm. it was it was pretty amazing they still did it in 15 minutes to get mm -hmm. the person out for uh, as violent of a wreck as it was right. yeah. so councilmember kurtzwell go ahead thank you mr mayor uh what do you estimate to be the cost if you were to purchase a new item well i don't know you know because there's many options that i'm trying to weigh if we were to buy i found a demo set a brand new battery pack for about nineteen thousand. New would be about twenty-eight thousand. Um, but I'm trying to see if there's something cheaper because I, we didn't budget for this. And but I'm scrambling to find. Can I buy the same motor since we have the tools? Do we fix it and try to find someone out of state that can work on it? Um, I, I'm just going to make a um, just a general comment. Uh, this is just one of those reasons, <laughs> you know, why you have a general fund balance. Um, and I don't want to risk anybody's life. I mean, this is a it's pretty, pretty important, but I feel a, I need to sit with Paul to see what yeah. his envision is, what we think we can do. Um, I don't want to throw something out there without having more information for you. And I, I you know, I want to make sure Paul supports what we think and, and what we do, but that's what I'm leaning towards until I can find a better option. I got really lucky with Green Oak. Hmm. You know, I, I reached out to Lyon Township um, and Green Oak, and the chief just like, well, borrow ours. They have, they went to all the battery ones, and they're like, well, you can borrow our, that's their backup. So that's <clears throat> pretty lucky, actually. It was the same brand. So. But that's a person's life. Yeah. That, that, and, and that's sitting there. We got really lucky we could finish. It was pretty... I, the well, crews were amazing that night between the police department and the ambulance and, and the firefighters. 17 minutes for, if you had to see the pictures, it was pretty, pretty awesome. My I'm proud of them. is that this happened in the, like, in the early morning One hours? One in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. We will expedite this. Yeah. And we will discuss this and bring it back this as yeah, quickly as possible. I don't to pull yeah. without more information because I want to make sure that... Yeah. What's best for the people? We have to have something, you so have I'm, to. I'm working hard on it, I okay. promise. You have to. Thanks, Chief. Councilman Prezian, go ahead. Chief Ogle, thanks for the update. Can you be sure to pass along our gratitude to Green Oak Township? Oh, I do. I, I love Chief Gentry, and they've got a great township board. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I, I, <clears throat> I'm docking, I'm making a letter now, actually. Thank you, and that's a huge help, and thank you. It to was pretty help. amazing when he called me, so we'll just come get ours. It's good camaraderie. So, yeah, and their mechanic brought it and set it up and made our tools work. And it was, Thank you. Uh, That's awesome. It was pretty great. So. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Chief. Thank you. Lieutenant Baki, do you have anything for SLPD tonight? Uh, just that, um, again, we're just asking the public to help out with the uh, cemetery. Any information, please give us a call. Um, we're trying to get the word out to uh, everybody. If they hear anything, get any information, please feel free to give us a call. Thank you. All right. With that, we'll move on to council comments this evening. Uh, Councilmember Kennedy, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, with regard to the uh, the cemetery, uh, I was out there last week with the uh, the city manager, looking at the uh, the damage that had occurred out there. Um, it was disheartening, as is probably an understatement. Obviously, a lot of emotion uh, centered around the uh, the cemetery and the uh, the headstones. I guess the uh, the, uh, the silver lining in, in part of the cloud is it didn't look like uh, the headstones themselves had uh, had cracked in half as a result of being toppled. Uh, I was out there later with the uh, with the crew uh, in uh, Monuments who did a a great job repositioning them, re uh, adhering them to the bases. Um, they looked like uh, most of them were in uh, in pretty good shape. Um, Unfortunately, you know, there's there's those that other people came and uh, set themselves. So we'll have to find those so that when Inch comes back, they can readdress the uh, the issue and get them set properly. Uh, it's unfortunate in a lot of cases there were uh, small statues and mementos that the families had left, obviously at the grave sites that were destroyed, 
and uh, are basically are irreplaceable. So uh, that is unfortunate, and uh, I know the the families. Obviously, those those things meant uh, a great deal to the family to place it at the grave site. So uh, hopefully, we find the uh, the individuals responsible and do take uh, the appropriate action. But on uh, behalf of uh, Inch Monuments, I was out there with the uh, the crew that was working as a three man crew, two trucks. Uh, they spent the better half of half a day taking care of that issue. So. Uh, it looks it look pretty good. Uh, on another uh, subject, I want to basically let everyone know that the Salem South Lion District Library will be holding its gigantic uh, book sale uh, from Tuesday, August 20th through uh, Saturday, August 24th. So come on out early for the best deals and selection and restock uh, your bookshelves. I uh, also want to remind everyone that uh, summer's not over yet. We have movies in the park scheduled for this Friday, August 16th, at around dusk uh, when they'll be showing Lego Movie 2. The second part so bring the family out and have a great time and on that uh, same night on the other side of McCaddy Park in the historical village this week's uh, concert in the park will feature Rich Eddie's rock and oldies band which always brings out a pretty sizable uh, audience the group is always a crowd pleaser so come on out this Friday at 7 o'clock for some great entertainment and speaking of the concerts in the park I want to mention that uh, you know I've had the opportunity to regularly attend the concerts during the course of the summer and during that time, I've had an opportunity to uh, discuss the Veterans Memorial that's planned for that area. Uh, I've spoken with a lot of folks that were out there attending the uh, concerts about the memorial and had a chance to answer a lot of questions from both residents and non-residents alike. They're excited about it and are looking forward to it. One individual in particular was extremely interested <coughs> in it. Mrs. Tamara Ward, who is the administrator at Abbey Park, was so interested and supportive of the effort that she has contributed a thousand dollars towards it on behalf of Abbey Park towards the memorial's construction. So I want to thank Tamara Ward and Abbey Park for their generous contribution. And this is just another example of the strong sense of community we have here in South Lyon, where people pull together and help one another whether they live within the city boundaries or not. We are truly one community. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Kennedy. Councilmember Richards. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I'll try to go fast and concisely, people. Uh, first, I, th I think I should mention what I wanted to say on consent agenda item number one. Uh, I'm, of course, I'm in favor of, of uh, which is had Brewing Company. But to Mr. Cottingham, if you can organize it, please don't block our museum area parking area during the hours of 1 to 4 p.m. if you can. We'd appreciate it if you left that, made sure that was left open because our museum is open on Saturday, 1 to 4. And uh, that was all I was going to say on that consent item. Uh, other items I was wanted to bring up to your attention, some of it's already been covered and I'll go real fast. Uh, the, the properties that Bob mentioned, the Bonner properties, Uptown 111 and 113 Lafayette, I've been in there, I took some pictures and I've talked to the guys and they're going great guns. They're working primarily on the upstairs at this time, and uh, it's what I told them, whatever you guys do, it's gonna be a miracle, it's gonna be a great, it's a victory, it's, keep on. Uh, by the same token, in that same location, there's a new parking lot paving between uh, Exquisite Kitchens and Oslander Center right there. Looks beautiful. Uh, if you ever happen to be by there, take a look. Uh, the next one down is interior renovations at the Providence Center. I think I mentioned this before, they were completed uh, and everything looks beautiful on the inside. It cost about a half a million dollars. Number four, uh, the exterior facade approved at the Planning Commission last week for 135 East Lake Street. I met those owners after the meeting. I talked with them uh, <clears throat> a little bit and gave them a few uh, heads up on a couple things. And I said, well, whatever you guys do, it's got to be wonderful. Because we're all in favor. On the, new, on the number five, the new well, number four, uh, we all have great success. I just want to mention one thing that you don't know about the, the new well, and I, can, I got my information from Mr. Varney over here. During the course of that well digging, the, uh, the underground, let's see, hydrogeologists were on site during the, the flushing process and they could radar the, the water flow underground, by the way, 127 feet down is where the tip of the point was for that well. 
and it went to a, th a thousand gallons a minute. I got pictures of that. And they measured it at an increase to 1,400 gallons a minute, and that's a lot of water. So our the conclusion being our money was really well spent on this well. Thank you, Mr. Varney, for that information. And I hope it passed it on to the public. I think they'd love to know that. Also at McCaddy Park, the Slera event is Wednesday. Uh, <coughs> bring your children. It's going to be wonderful. They'll have uh, these games and these bouncing rooms for kids to play in and such, and it's free. Uh, some things aren't free, but uh, it'll be free. And a depot day meeting for organization. Anybody wants to be, participate in depot day? It's 10 a.m. tomorrow morning at the uh, freight house over in the, in the museum area. And in regards to the demolition of the properties, the money's all set. I understand that the demolition of the house in McCaddy Park and the library, it's all been budgeted. It's, it's got to be done. I understand. I would hope we could save those juniper trees, uh, if possible, that are alongside the north side of the gray house in McCaddy Park. Uh, the house has got to go, but those trees, we could use them someplace else. And with that, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Richards. <clears throat> Councilmember Kurtzwell. Thank you. Um, with respect to the cemetery, if anybody knows anything about who is responsible for the destruction of that property, uh, please do the right thing. Uh, quite frankly, your friends are not worth it. Uh, you will be more respected by the people who really, really count. That's your family and your community. If you just come forward with information and just do the right thing. I actually heard um, on the radio where an individual excused this behavior by saying, well, it's summertime and the kids are bored. I found that to be the most disgusting comment I think I've heard in a long time. Boredom is not an excuse for destruction of property. I found an article dated February 14, 1988 from the Los Angeles Times. They were talking about boredom is no excuse. A police investigator described as bored the three boys who built a pipe bomb that killed one of the youths last July. Whoever hit a 16-year-old Jennifer Pratt in the head with a 2 by 4 as she rode on the back of her boyfriend's motorcycle hasn't been caught, but many in her North County community suspect boredom partying high school students. When several athletes were arrested on assault charges, the mother of one of the boys convicted said children have no place to go except unsupervised parties. I'm sorry, but none of these are excuses. None of these are excuses for injury to person or injury to property. And the person who made that comment, I hope you rethink what you said, because you are expressing a value system that is not consistent with the values here in this community. Next, I would like to thank Jim Runstead, who is our newly elected state senator, for his family fun and festival guide for 2019 and for his attention to the city of South Lyon, which includes mention of our Memorial Day Parade, South Lyon Depot Day, South Lyon Pumpkin Fest, and yes, he even included right here South Lyon Farmers Market. And this goes all over the state of Michigan, and I want to thank Mr. Runstad for him thinking clearly of South Lyon. I'd also like to thank the fire and police departments for making a whole lot of kids happy last Saturday when they showed up at the Hidden Creek Block Party. Um, we had a fire truck there. We had a police uh, vehicle there. And I think there's some future responders in the making. And I want to thank the fire and police department. Uh, they were passing out badges, passing out uh, things for the kids, and it was just absolutely a wonderful day um, that I really enjoyed. And I really want to promote these block parties. Uh, I had a great time with all of my neighbors. It was a super event. It was an old-fashioned time where you sat down and you, and you connected and communicated with people that you live with. You learned about their kids. You learned about what they're doing with their lives. You learned about their new job change. Uh, you learned a lot about your neighbors, and I think we're we're missing that kind of human connection in this day of of this crazy, you know, Facebook and the nastiness that's out there. Uh, get away from social media and get back sometimes to just some basic arts of of sitting down and enjoying the conversation with people. I'd also like to thank all the sponsors who helped make Motorfest a real success. More importantly, thank you, Doug Cook, his wife, the staff, for your incredible commitment to South Lyon. 
Also, I want to thank a new attorney to South Lyon. Her name is Julie Paquette, and she is located in the business center with Huntington Bank. She does wills and trusts and POAs. Uh, she's like me. She keeps evening and weekend appointments. I've met her. I've had an opportunity to chat with her, and she's absolutely charming. Um, and I just want to welcome her, and I hope everybody <laughs> else does. Julie Paquette. Uh, as to the uh, Veterans Memorial, uh, uh, I would like to also thank Tamara Ward and just like to let the community know that we are about $1,000 short. So if anybody, you know, 10 people with $100, you know, there, there's that $1,000. So if anybody can come forward, please come into City Hall, meet with our Economic Development Director. We, we're just looking for 1000 more dollars. It can be done. I know it. Uh, so thank you, Tamara. I know you don't want to be publicly thanked because you like to do things behind the scenes. Uh, but thank you very much for your generosity on behalf of Abbey Park. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, and have a great week. Thank you, Councilmember Kurtzwell. Councilmember Prezian. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have two things. My general mantra, please volunteer if you know anybody or you're interested yourself. Um, Pumpkin Fest is going to be added to the mix. Make sure you volunteer for Pumpkin Fest. I believe they still need volunteers. Um, Parks and Rec, uh, Cable Commission, we have a whole slew of different committees, com uh, commissions, things of that nature that could use the help. And there's always something going on in the community, so it's a good way to just get involved. My second thing I wanted to mention was it's election season. So I have received so many different phone calls, emails, things of that nature about, hey, what's your recommendation? Do you know the candidates? Who would you recommend? And I just wanted to let everybody know as a blanket statement, do your homework. Do your homework. Go out, check out their Facebook pages. Um, go to the meet and greets. If you have an opportunity to meet with them one-on-one, -on -one, ask questions. What are things that concern you and your community and that you want them to advocate for? Um, we have a few candidates tonight in the crowd. Who are the people that are coming to the meetings, that are paying attention, that are watching the meetings, things of that nature? You really want people who are going to advocate for you and for your loved ones and for the other residents within our community. Um, not only that, but those of you who are running, make sure you pay attention to your downtown. Go visit your downtown businesses. It's not just about the residents, but it's also about our businesses as well. Our downtown is so important. And all of the businesses, not just the downtown ones. Um, and lastly, if we, I mean, we have candidates in the crowd, but we have candidates up here as well. And it's kind of unique because the candidates that we have up here, you can do your research on them. Go look at the videos. Go look at past newspaper clippings. Who works well with one another? Who has been propelling this community forward? Who is an obstructionist? Who is working well with others? There's so many things that you can do on your end, homework-wise, to figure out who is the best candidate for you to vote for. So do your homework. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Councilmember Prezian. Councilmember Kibble. Uh, we had the Whipple Street uh, block party on Saturday night, and I had the good fortune of being able to capture a photo of a balloon that was going to be landing over at MST's lot over there. So that was kind of an extraordinary thing, and uh, it was a beautiful night for it. This weekend was, was a spectacular time. Uh, it's kind of getting steamy again, so I'm, I'm looking back at those days and thinking that was really terrific. Uh, I, I really can't extend enough gratitude to Inch for having taken care of our cemetery like they did. Um, that is truly above and beyond, and I'm sure that everybody that has loved ones there that were worried about that are as grateful as I am that they were as giving as they had been. So that was, that was a, a very calming kind of response for a lot of people. So that was, I, I can't thank them enough. So, um, and it's, it's kind of nice when uh, it was spoken to earlier that there was an awful lot of traffic going around in the cemetery over the weekend. And I, I can't help but tell you, you should go to our cemetery. It's a very well-maintained piece of property. And when you see the names of the historic names, the people's names are on street signs and things as a, a forerunner to who, are, who is living here now. Um, it, it's just a really nice place. They do a great job of tending to it. And we have some really, from the basic uh, Civil War kind of um, monuments to some really pretty spectacular ones down there. So, um, but once again, thank you, Inch. 
we can't thank you enough for what you uh, added to our our calm. So that's actually all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn. Um, thank you, Glenn. Quickly, um, I want to piggyback off uh, Councilmember Parisian's um, volunteer thing. We, Lisa, we have a, a relatively urgent opening um, for alternate for the GBA board. Okay, so we need an alternate for the ZBA board. If you are at home and have been on the fence about getting involved, this is a this is the perfect role for you. Um, it's I can't imagine that you will be called on more than once, maybe twice a year. Um, but we definitely that is a position that we need to get filled. Um, so if you've been on the fence and you've been thinking about it, well, maybe I don't have time. That's a perfect one to try and break the ice and see how it is. So. Please, if you're thinking about it, that's we need you for that. Um, quickly, I know we haven't been, uh, we haven't had a meeting for a while. We had the extra week there at the end of July. Um, I had the privilege to go and represent the city of South Lyon at the Michigan Mayor's Association Summer Workshop um, back on August 1st and 2nd in Port Huron. It was my first time to Port Huron. It's a beautiful city. Um, picked up a lot of uh, great ideas that helped them kind of bounce back uh, in their city of 30,000. They have a beautiful historical district. Obviously, uh, we can't match up with that coastline. <laughs> but, um, but so that was, that was a lot of fun to be able to do that and um, some, met some great people that represent um, many of the fine cities here in the state of Michigan. So uh, with that, I hope everyone is uh, ready to enjoy the rest of summer. And, and my favorite time of the year, fall and football season is coming. So uh, with that, I will look for a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a great night, all. Thank you. Okay.